Hi, this is Tag again, and today I'm going to do a guide on how to basically turn a P5E3 Deluxe into a P5E3 Premium. So, cross flashing it and, well, fixing the major problem that comes with the cross flash, and that being that V core doesn't work properly anymore, and you need uh, a volt mod for higher voltages. Uh, without the volt mod, after a cross flash, the limit is about 1.7 volts on V core. So this is your typical feedback mod. I'm going to do a uh, detailed guide later, but I'm also going to show you what I did to my personal board here. Well, I fixed this just because uh, somebody requested the mod, so uh, this was broken before. But yeah, I basically gave it my full treatment because I'm intending to do uh, actually a like quick bench session with this just to show you what is possible after the mod. So my usual X38 or X48 treatment, deleted North Bridge, then I'm sure you can't see it, but there is a uh, switching frequency mod for the North Bridge VRM. I'm also going to do a detailed overview on the computer of that one. Uh, so you can add that as well. It is um, slightly less aggressive than on my uh, P5E64s because the form factor of these MOSFETs. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they don't like the high switching frequency, so I didn't raise it quite as much. I, I didn't double it. It should be about 450 kilohertz now instead of 300. Uh, on the on the P5E64s I run uh, about 600 kilohertz. So yeah, also just some, some new caps for an off bridge, some MLCCs on the back. There is the monitoring wire, you can use any of the upper pads of these capacitors here or solder them directly behind uh, the socket. Now obviously you only need the monitoring wire because, uh, well, your uh, CPU V-Core is analog via the mod. Anyways, now I'm going to show you on the bench how to cross flash this. Uh, so see you there. Okay, so here we are. As you can see, it says P5E3 Deluxe. Uh, we have a little USB stick with DOS on it. And this is actual P5E3 Deluxe, as you can see. Not like the last time. And yeah, let's press F2 to continue. And it should boot into DOS. There we go. Yes. So, uh, change into your directory where you have the files. Uh, P5, E3. There we are. Now I have the deluxe and the premium here. So, you want your command to six u I have to specify the .exe because otherwise it uses the AFODOS in the home directory for some reason. Uh, you don't have to if that's the only AFODOS you have on the USB stick. Now obviously I'm going to put this version here in the description because this is a engineering version that allows you to flash the wrong BIOS. So now you want uh, slash i your BIOS name, so P0803. And now you need the override commands, slash P, D, N, C, slash N. And now it should happily flash our BIOS. I'm unable to open ROM file. Why is that? Because I forgot to type .rom, of course. There we go. Now this is pretty easy. Uh, you just need the right version of the AVUDOS basically. And the rest is just like flashing any other BIOS in DOS. And I'm going to obviously link you the AVUDOS in the description because it actually took me quite some time to find it. 
Uh, before that, I just hard flashed my boards if they, if I wanted to cross cross flash them. But not everybody has a USB flasher, so I I thought it would be a good idea to, well, do it in a way that everyone can replicate. So now we're just going to wait for the BIOS flashing to finish. Okay, here we are. So it's all done. Let's restart the system and well see what happens seems to be posting now it's probably going to complain about something so i'm not going to press any keys now and there we are it's a spom e3 premium now and let's go into setup ai tweaker we got the p5 e3 premium AI tweaker with uh, more CPU V core, as you can see here, and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's basically it. Okay, so here we are. Let's start with V core. Now, quick disclaimer this, as you can see by this joke, is a premium, not a deluxe. But all the parts around the voltage controller are exactly the same, so it still applies. Now basically what happened here, I, I did the volt mod and after I did the volt mod I realized that I forgot to take a clean picture and I only have one uh, deluxe with the voltage controller still on there. All the other ones, well all the other ones, the one other one I have in my salvage bin didn't have the voltage controller. So instead of desoldering everything I just took a picture of the premium. Anyways, your feedback pin is one, two, three pins up here. You can also grab it on top of this MLCC, this resistor, or at the left pin of this MLCC or this resistor. From there it's pretty standard stuff. You want a very resistor, like this, to ground. Now for ground points, uh, personally yeah, I used screw hole because right next to the screw hole there is a convenient ground. Uh, I, I didn't measure much stuff here because, well, most of the parts in this screenshot are relatively small and I wouldn't recommend like soldering a second wire at, to a small part in this area just to like keep the clutter down. But there is a screw hole ground up here and there should also be some bigger MLCCs. Uh, you can just basically measure from the... Uh, like ground on the IO shield until you find uh, one side of most MLCCs is always ground until you find one. Uh, for values, uh, 20 to 50 kilo ohms right here. Now, I would go actually with the 50, probably. Uh, personally, on mine, I went with the 20, but I ran into uh, some issues with. Uh, running too high voltages where it would randomly shut off as soon as there was a load spike or it came off a load spike, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, basically you can only run a um, limited voltage boost in OS actually, but you can use this to, like, you can turn it way up to get chips with low VID to post. Uh, in BIOS and stuff, there is no random shutdown issue. But uh, if your board starts behaving weird, basically, after you did the volt mod, uh, just turn down the voltage. Uh, in general, this board plus volt mod is not capable of really high V cores. So you're probably not going to want to bench anything like uh, Allendale or Cedar Mill on here. At least not on cold. For ambient, uh, there is basically no limitations here. So yeah, that is your uh, CPU volt mod. Let's move on to the switching frequency mod. Now this one is really quick. You just want to basically parallel a resistor on here. Let's make the uh, a bit bigger, like this and like that. On this resistor, you want to basically parallel a resistor. Mm, this is ugly. A resistor. Uh, for values, I would go with something starting with 33 to like 40 kilo ohms. Uh, 
uh, don't go too low because, well, uh, those MOSFETs are not made for really high switching frequencies. So if you want to play it safe, get a like a 36 is a, a usual value for a resistor. Or you can obviously do a variable resistor. Uh, just put a 50 kilo ohm on there and just tune it to your liking. Uh, I personally don't like doing switching frequency mods with variable resistors because I feel it's uh, a waste of a perfectly good variable resistor because it's not something you are going to be tuning while overclocking. Like you might get a benefit from it, but it's it's so minuscule that it probably doesn't matter. Anyways, that's about it for the modding video. This was a relatively short one, hopefully. Uh, mostly because there's not really much stuff you need to mod on this board. Uh, it's pretty friendly, modding friendly board, I would say. So yeah, anyways, that's it. Uh, I hope this helps. Bye.